Day 17, the last full day. Since I only have eight miles to walk, I had a very slow, let things dry type morning. And now it's just a cruisy little day, not a whole lot of elevation I have to do. Going past a real restroom at Crabtree Meadows. Ooh, and I feel really darn good today. This, um, the blue sky is out. <sighs> it's a good temperature. I just feel so alive. <laughs> so alive and capable. This must be what 30 feels like. Someone gave me some Luco tape for my blisters, which is supposed to be even better than duct tape. Um, but now I had to cross this creek. We'll see if it holds up. And it held up. Yay. Yay, Luco tape. I'm loco for Luca tape. It's three o'clock. I'm all set up at Guitar Lake. It's 4.6 miles to the summit of Mount Whitney. Oh yeah, I decided against camping um, at the place where it's the turnoff to the actual summit, which would be two miles away. But I was like, that is going to be freezing cold and very windy, which may be true for here too, but at least it won't be an extreme. I've camped away from other people. Probably people will come around me as it gets later, but oh well. I am trying to kind of do this as a solo mission just because I have a bad habit of when I camp with people not getting up until I hear other people getting up because I'm like, oh, I don't have to get up. I'm, a, I'm an old ward. I can sleep in, but no, <laughs> I can't, especially not today. Why I want to summit at sunrise, it just feels like a cool experience. You know, I could never, if you said, hey, could you climb a 13,000 foot mountain pass? I would have said no, but I already have. If you said, could you climb Mount Whitney? I'd be like, heck no, but I'm gonna try. Can you get up super early in the morning? Heck no, but I'm gonna try. Hoping to witness the dawn of a do new day from a really beautiful spot that I will probably not ever go back to again in my life. I think once will be enough, but <laughs> oh yeah. I did some math. Um, I'm going to allow myself three hours. One o'clock, wake up. 1.30 on trail. Allow myself some wiggle room. 4.30, be finding a good spot. Five, sunrise. It's, it's just my guess. I actually stopped by the ranger station to ask, and they didn't know. So, um, it's just a shot in the dark, which also makes me really nervous. But... Oh well, <laughs> you gotta just try your best, I guess. Since I had all my ducks in a row for the rest of the day, I headed over to where my friends were camping for some dinner and some company. This was one of my favorite moments of the whole trip. Just hanging out, chilling, laughing in this absolutely stunning landscape. It's just after 7 p.m. and I am going to lay down for the night. I had a really nice evening with the people I've met the past couple days. Just making dinner, sitting around talking. It was definitely the most unexpected, wonderful part of this trip was meeting people and 
making friends on the trail. Usually the Tahoe Rim Trail and the Superior Hiking Trail, you might say hi to someone, you might run into again, run into them again, but I've never had that where like you're intentionally hanging out with people that you've met on the trail. Really cool group, good people to get to know, but it's gonna be an early morning. I'm excited for it. I never thought I would be excited to wake up literally in the middle of the night, but I say bring it on. It's 12.30, but I, um, I can't fall back asleep for half an hour. I have to go to the bathroom anyway, so I'm just going to get up and start getting ready. I slept from maybe like 10 to 11, dozed off a little, but I haven't been getting good sleep on the trail at all. And I think the excitement and nervousness of making sure I woke up in the middle of the night, you know, that didn't really help. This is already the coolest experience ever. I'm not even using my headlamp because the moon is so bright and all the rocks are lit up and I've only seen people in the distance who are awake. So it kind of feels like I'm the only person on this planet. It's 1.45 and the trail is definitely starting to be a little less fun. A little more of a intense workout. I took my coat off already. Oh my gosh. I mean, I knew it was going to be a climb. Um, yeah, just same strategy as all the other passes. Keep moving forward. There's Guitar Lake down there. If you look, you can see one white light coming up the mountain and one or two red lights that are still getting ready, I guess. Soon this whole trail will look like a Christmas light with all the little twinkling headlights along the trail. One last stream crossing just when you thought they were done. I've been hiking for an hour now and I am 1.2 miles, so that's okay. I saved myself plenty of time. Um, three things I'm thinking of to tell you. One, our eyesight is so amazing. I can see all these mountains, sometimes the rocks in detail, just by the light of the moon. Thank you rods and cones, right? Two. A few hours ago, before anyone woke up, these mountains looked just like this. And they looked like this, the last full, our almost full moon. Nature really doesn't need us. We need it. It needs us to stop polluting it, maybe. And third, I could have never done this if it wasn't for all those little passes. Well, they weren't little, but they definitely helped build up to this and so it's just a a metaphor for every time you're going through something you know you're just getting wiser and stronger and more determined I've kept a journal on this trail and I just wanted to take something really small, really light, and I thought I have better odds of making something exactly what I want instead of trying to buy it. The cover of this journal I made is cardboard from a beer box. Got it in Kansas, and the name is Ad Astra, which is part of the Kansas state motto, which is something in Latin I don't remember, but... What it means is, to the stars, 
with a struggle or something along those lines. And that's so fitting because I am walking towards the stars right now with a struggle. How perfect. It's three o'clock now, um, which was my halfway point as far as the time I wanted to get up there, but it's I'm not to the halfway point as far as distance yet. But I'm not really worried because just judging based on what other people are doing, there's still a lot of headlights coming up from the lake. It seems like everyone else is thinking that they are okay to be up later in order to catch the sunrise. I'm almost to the trail junction, but oh, I'm really slowing down because it's getting steep. Oh, plus, I'm just taking a lot of pictures and videos. I can tell we're coming up to a sign. Oh, man. This is it, the trail crest. Whitney girl, two miles away. Dang. This is where a lot of people would leave their packs, but it's gonna be a while for this sunrises. So instead of carrying my sleeping bag up there, carrying my stove to keep warm, I'm just going to bring my whole backpack. It's come this far with me. It can go two more miles. You can see some headlamps down there coming up the trail. There's where Guitar Lake was. And man, look at this. It's steeper than I pictured. You know, still have to climb a little bit, not a flat line across the ridge but i'm taking a break to layer up because i'm getting chilly i did have to turn my headlight on for this part now because it's a lot rockier and I want to make sure I'm exactly sure where I'm putting my feet every time before. It was really not too bad of ground to walk on for um, the switchbacks and stuff. It was mostly grit. It looks like there's less elevation gain on this part of the trail, but it's really just as difficult as the switchbacks. I'm looking ahead of me. I see people's lights in the distance ahead, and it's so far. I don't think I'll ever make it up this mountain. There's the people behind me. And that's what I have to walk in front of me. This part where it looks like it's about to get flat, but it never does, has been happening for a really long time now. The moon is saying goodbye to us. I can see a little bit of daylight. 
I have two traditions that I do at the end of every through hike and I think it's time to start the first one. I think I need to run to from wherever I am now to the end. Let's go. Okay, full disclosure, I stopped, but I'll start up again in a sec. That's it. That's the hut. went up to look at the view. Still got a while before the actual sun, but no one's talking to each other. It's just, I feel like people got competitive about who would get here first and now it's awkward times. Hope that changes when more people show up. I have to sign my name in the love book. First you gotta figure out how to open it. Maddie Zickle, Louisville, Kentucky. Started in my 20s, ended in my 30s. Awesome birthday. There's the survey marker, and there's me eating my birthday cake quest bar. I had my birthday cake flavored quest bar. I watched the sunrise. It's the end of the JMT. Kind of relieved, but overall just very, very thankful for this experience. One last time, gazing at the mountains, I see where I camped, the valley, and the hills that I walked through the day before, and all these mountains. I've been over passes here and there. I am absolutely exhausted from not sleeping, but it's still a pretty cool moment, even if I am dying a little bit. Oh, you thought the video was over because the trail was over? Nope. Still got to walk down to Whitney Portal. The exit from Whitney Portal might be my least favorite section of trail. The ground is so hard to walk on. It's mostly slippery rock or loose rock. Um, it's very steep. Today is very hot. And it is nine miles, I think, from Mount Whitney, like the junction. Oh, and it goes on forever. And I had one hour of sleep last night. Get out of the path! Finally walking through 
this thing. I've seen this in all the videos and now it's finally my turn. And that really was the end of the trail. I wolfed down a delicious burger, treated myself to some ice cream, and got a ride into Lone Pine, where I had a hotel room waiting for me with a hot shower and a big bed. And just down the street was a gas station that sold cold Californian beer.